Hello everybody, how are you guys doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review and welcome back. So today is Q&A day yet again. It's mini Q&A day every once in a while. I do like to do the mini version of the Q&As because I do freaking love the long form Q&As. You guys have heard me say that so many times. I've been doing it for years now on the channel. And uh, I do of course put that call out on Twitter and I ask you guys for a bunch of questions and say, hey, what's on your mind? What topics are you curious about? What ideas or suggestions do you have for me that you want to hear me just sort of discuss? And I love being able to do it because I get to give you guys, of course, a personal shout out, read your tweet, answer the questions. I get to cover a wide variety of topics, even though, of course, they're always like 99% of the time gaming related, and that's okay. It's usually what I'm looking for anyway. Although I do welcome questions about like movies or music as well. Uh, on a mini Q&A where I'm only going to answer three or four questions, I do like to keep it gaming focused, and that's what we've done today. I got to tell you, I put that tweet out not that long ago, like probably 30 minutes ago, and I got a lot of responses really, really quickly. And I was like, man, I actually have a couple of good questions. I'm just ready to go over these few right now. And so that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to go ahead and just jump right in to the first question today. Again, these all came from Twitter. First one is the biggest of the bunch. And so I wanted to kind of start with what I think will probably be my biggest answer and the biggest topic. Uh, it also comes from a good buddy of mine and a fellow YouTube channel, Smash JT. Hopefully you guys are familiar with him. I even actually featured uh, his channel and a video that he made on one of my videos uh, a few weeks back because it was sort of inspiration for that topic. And uh, we're going to answer a question from him because this is a big deal. This is, this is something that he's been talking about now for a few weeks. So let's go ahead and jump really quickly. He basically asks me, probability of Prime 4 being a Switch VR launch title? Now, I know that might seem like a really crazy question and a crazy idea, and I will again give uh, Smash credit for this because he made a response video to another Metroid video I made a few weeks ago, and in that he discussed that this is kind of his big theory. And while he fully acknowledges that it's not something he's like necessarily putting all his money on, it is also something he kind of believes in, is that Nintendo might be working on VR, and he thinks that possibly Metroid Prime 4, which is this hugely hotly anticipated game, could be a title that's meant to be featured on VR and to showcase the VR and kind of help launch the thing. And so uh, I'm going to link his video below where he talks about it for a couple of minutes. It's a good video. And now I want to discuss my thoughts on this whole crazy idea. So of course, in order to discuss Metroid Prime 4 on VR, I think the first thing I need to address is just VR. Nintendo Virtual Reality, because that has to be a real possibility for anything Metroid Prime 4 related to even be associated with it. And I've got to say, at the end of the day, while nothing is ever impossible, I really don't think that we're getting a VR unit or, or experience from Nintendo anytime soon. Now, what I will agree with is that, yeah, eventually Nintendo may, may work themselves into this territory. In fact, I would even maybe say it's almost likely that Nintendo will eventually dabble in virtual reality. But I think this is one of those examples where, in a lot of situations, Nintendo likes to be ahead of the curve on a lot of things happening and be innovators with a lot of different technology and ideas and ways for gamers to interact with their games and their systems. And there are other times where they like to take the slow wait and see approach, like with online gaming and DLC, for example. And by the time they finally roll out this practice or whatever it may be, they're usually doing it better than some of the competition. And I feel like VR is more on that territory than something that they want to be a pioneer of. I mean, to be fair, it's too late for them to be a pioneer of home VR because there's like the HTC Vive and then Oculus and then, of course, even Sony, their direct competitor, already has their VR unit on the market. So they definitely wouldn't be a pioneer, but if they were going to be doing VR in the next like couple of years, I think they would still be on the forefront of it. I think that Nintendo's waiting a long time before they get into it. They've mentioned that they've looked at it, they've considered it, they've played around with it. And so we know that they're kind of like, they've probably got a little tiny room in the in the back bunker of Nintendo where they got like two or three people working with VR stuff for way down the road. I think that's their plan is they're going to wait for Sony's thing to just do its thing for the next year. They're going to wait to see home consumer level virtual reality. Is it going to really take off? Is it going to become actually affordable and give quantifiably good experiences? 
I think that's what Nintendo was waiting for before they would consider doing it. And I do think if it does continue to take off, to me, virtual reality is in a lull right now. I don't think it's taking the world by storm. I don't think anyone cares about it. And so I think the future of consumer level VR is definitely in jeopardy. But let's say that's not the case and VR does have a resurgence and it does take off and with the PS5 and the next Xbox, suddenly virtual reality becomes more commonplace and it's actually quality and worth playing real games on, then I think Nintendo is going to start to implement virtual reality. So I could see Nintendo VR becoming a reality no earlier than five years from now. It's like five years or later, I think Nintendo is going to probably try to mess with it. And so, of course, what that means, as far as my opinion on this goes, which is only an opinion and a guess, I could be wrong, but my opinion is, if that's the case, then obviously Metroid Prime 4 isn't going to make sense in VR, both as a launch title for VR and even just to release on VR, because I feel like if Nintendo's gonna do something virtual reality related, it's gonna be way after the Switch's time has come and gone. It's gonna be on the next console, or even the one after that, or whatever the case. And so Metroid Prime 4 will just be a, a distant memory, which is weird to think about. We're going so far into the future. But at the, at the time that I think Nintendo might do VR, Prime 4 is gonna be a classic game. It's gonna be old school. We might be on Metroid Prime's five or six, or whatever next Metroid games are coming after that. You know, because the, here's another element to this. Let's say in two years, Nintendo releases a virtual reality unit and Prime 4, whether it's brand new at the time or whether Prime 4 has been out for a year and they're just making it available on that VR. The other thing is, from what I understand, and I'm not an expert here, so maybe I'm wrong, but from what I understand, with consumer level console VR, like even the PlayStation 4's VR, I don't think it can run very graphically enhanced games. And I've seen like uh, uh, like Resident Evil 7, which is a beautiful game, running on the VR for PS4. And they have to significantly downgrade the visuals to make that game work because honestly, VR is really demanding. And especially when you're looking at a game as graphically demanding as a Resident Evil 7. And on the PlayStation 4, which is a lot more powerful than the Switch, you guys. They have to really downgrade that game. Metroid Prime 4, you guys have heard me say this, I think it's gonna be visually the best looking Nintendo game ever created. And so I think that, I just think that a Nintendo VR unit that would work with the Switch and its current technology, in order to even run whatever Prime 4 is gonna be and make it a worthwhile experience and look and play and feel right, it's probably gonna be close to impossible or at least it would have to run a downgraded version of Metroid Prime 4 that would be so downgraded, it might not even be worth it. I'm kind of treading into that technological territory that I really am not very well versed in, you guys know, so I really could be wrong on a lot of that. But just like my gut feeling tells me that a VR unit for the Switch probably wouldn't even run a worthwhile version of whatever Prime 4 turns out to be. So, at the end of the day, I know this is like my long answer. Like I said, I knew this was going to be a longer answer to a question. Um, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll say nothing is impossible. Nintendo is very hard to predict when it comes to things like these. They've told us they're not interested in VR right now, but maybe they're lying or they changed their minds. And it turns out that next year, VR's coming, Metroid Prime 4 is coming, and oh look, we're going to make Prime 4 worthwhile in VR. And I'll even say this is the actual last point I'll say. I do love the idea of it. Let's not pretend like if Nintendo did have a way to release a worthwhile VR unit and have Prime 4 running in that VR that we wouldn't all be totally geeking out at the, at the prospect. I mean, yes, I'm not really into VR, but I do want to try VR and there is something about having a Prime game playing a Metroid Prime experience in virtual reality. Yes, that totally gets my nerd senses and my my Metroid fanboy senses tingling like crazy. I would love to experience it, to experience it. My whole thing here is that I just don't think it's possible or that it's coming. I think VR from Nintendo is way, way down the road, and I simply don't see it working with Metroid Prime 4. So that's it for that. Thanks so much, Smash, for the question. I super uh, appreciate it, buddy. Let's move on to the next question from Twitter. This one comes from Bleached Eye at Bleached Eye 24. Thank you so much for asking another question, and this is also Metroid related. And he or she says, do you think we will ever see Metroid Samus Returns on the Nintendo Switch? Now, I like this question because I, I'm invested in this happening, and I think a lot of people are invested in this happening. And, uh, you know, I think that my, my knee-jerk reaction to this question would be to say no. 
But I've, I've been thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? I actually don't think it's impossible, and it's for a few reasons. One is, at the time that Samus Returns released, now close to a year ago, by the way, September last year, 2017, the 3DS, although it was clearly on its way out even last year, I still think it felt that much more relevant at the time. And so the idea of it coming to the Switch to me didn't make sense because it's like, well, they just want it to be a benefit to the 3DS owners only and to try to still sell 3DSs because the console is still making some money. And so I was like, they're not going to want to cannibalize that market by putting it on the Switch. Fast forward to today, whatever, 8, 9, 10 months later, and it's like, you know what? Honestly, the 3DS and the 2DS, even though they did just release a new 2DS, it's like, you know, it is more on the way out now than I thought it would be at this time. And so the less and less the DS family, the 3DS and 2DS makes sense for Nintendo to be pushing, the more I would believe they might be willing to bring some experiences over to the Switch. And we're already having the first example of that happening soon. The World Ends With You comes out sometime soon this year, I think August or September. And that's an old DS game. And so that is like, people aren't talking about this, but that game is the first to break ground of portable DS family content being ported over to the Nintendo Switch. And this even predates the 3DS. This is the original DS, that game. And something else I was thinking about is like, man, on the Wii U, they brought Game Boy and DS experiences over as well. They brought over... Um, Metroid Prime Hunters, they brought over Metroid Fusion and Metroid Zero Mission. Those were portable DS and Game Boy Family Metroid experiences, and they ported those over to the Wii U, and they were great on the Wii U, by the way. That was super awesome that they did that. And so we're living in a world where we're wondering what's happening with, you know, virtual console on the Switch and all these things. And it's like, man, you know what? If Nintendo was ever going to start bringing classic games over to the DS and port them over whatever, however they do it, I mean, Samus Returns isn't a classic game. It's like kind of still, in a way, a current game. But I just think, you know what? I could see Nintendo making this surprise thing happen. With the 3DS and the DS family so close to dead at this point, and I love the consoles, but they should be dead. It's like, why wouldn't they want to bring one of their most recent games, their biggest hits, something that they know Metroid fans want to play, and a lot of them missed or passed on because they weren't willing to pick up a 3DS or buy a new one, or they just didn't even want to play on the damn 3DS, but they know people want this game, I think that they would be silly to ignore the market. That's the thing is, honestly, there's a huge market for Samus Returns on the Switch, and I know Nintendo knows that. They obviously are supporting Metroid and Samus, you know, with renewed interest nowadays, so why wouldn't they take advantage of that? There's a lot of money to be made, there's a lot of gamers to be made happy with a version of Samus Returns on the Nintendo Switch, and I think in a world where so many other Metroid things are possible, you guys know my feelings, I think that, yeah, the 3DS is gonna be basically dead next year, which is like in six months or whatever. So why wouldn't they consider bringing Samus Returns over? You know, maybe next year before Prime 4 comes out. Yeah, I think that um, actually it's possible. We might see it happen. Next question on Twitter comes from Bob Gray at Hobbit GAN 74, Hobbit GAN 74. Uh, what's up, Bob? Thanks for the questions. Bob asks me a lot of questions, so I'm just gonna power through these like a shotgun blast. So let's do it. He says, next direct, what is being shown? Will Metroid Trilogy come out this year? Yes. Is Mario compilation coming? No. Are you excited for Monster Boy? What's that? What happened to the hype with the Switch? I'm not sure how to answer that. Skyward Sword coming to the Switch in the next three years. Now this one, I will answer really quickly because I kind of think that, yeah, we might see that happen. Skyward Sword has been a conversation for a long time. A lot of people want it. A lot of people believe in it. And you know what? I believe in it too. It makes sense. This game deserves a resurgence. Ocarina of Time has had a resurgence. Twilight Princess has had a resurgence, Wind Waker had a resurgence, Skyward Sword needs the same thing. Yes, it's tricky because of the controls, but obviously the Joy-Cons could allow for that, so specifically on the Switch, I think it makes sense, and I don't know, like, maybe Nintendo has no plans to ever do it, but I just believe in Skyward Sword, so... I would say, yeah, it's possible we, we might see the game come to the Switch eventually. Okay, and the last question on Twitter for today's mini Q&A comes from Jace Sear, at Jace Sear. Hopefully I pronounced your name right, buddy. And Jace asks me, when do you think we will see Nintendo's classic games appear on the Switch other than the 20 NES games via Nintendo Switch Online? So, of course, back to the classic games 
back to the Nintendo Virtual Console. What the hell is happening with the Switch? Where are all these classic games that we feel like we've been promised? All of these different things. I've discussed this numerous times in the past. We all have. Many YouTubers have. And it's such a hard question to answer, but it is such an interesting thing because, man, we all want this to happen. We all want to play these classic games on our Switch. And there's a thousand reasons why it could happen. There's a thousand re reasons why it might not be happening. You know, I'm starting to get to the point where I, I fear, and this is a fear to me because I think this is a truth and it's not something I like, but I fear that Nintendo might not actually be interested in doing anything like this anymore, like a true virtual console because I think that they just nail it with these classic mini editions. The NES and the SNES were so successful and popular. I just feel like Nintendo's not done with releasing separate hardware that, that, that pushes the same kind of content. Now that doesn't mean that they can't coexist and I do think that there's a possibility that Nintendo is still planning on doing it. And the simple fact that they are doing the 20 NES games and more NES games on the Switch Online is great. That does open the possibility for non-NES games to show up, like SNES and 64 games eventually as well. I do think that there is a possibility that that could happen, but I also think there's a possibility that they're not interested in doing that. They want to stick to just a couple of NES games, make it an NES only thing, and if you want to play your 64 and your Super NES and Game Boy games, you're going to have to buy these separate retro things that they're going to continue to pump out. You know, that, that's a maybe because they also might not make anything beyond the SNES Classic. So that's why this is really hard for us to answer still because there's a hundred different directions Nintendo could be going with this. <clears throat> you know, I think that what I will do is come back to my tried and true answer to this and something I've been saying from the get-go and many of you guys have heard me say this and I'm going to bring it up again. I think the best shot that we have at seeing Nintendo bring classic games to the Switch and not to an NES, SNES, N64 classic, you know, separate little $60 purchase is just individual games on the eShop. I don't think the Virtual Console is coming. And Reggie or Nintendo recently said something about not doing it that way anymore anyway. And so I think if they're going to do it, you know, beyond the 20 NES games, I think they're just going to start saying, hey, we're releasing a couple of N64 or SNES games or GameCube games, hopefully eventually Genesis and stuff like that as well. We're just going to release a couple of those a month just on the eShop and you can just search for them by title. You're like, oh, I want to download Mario 64. And so you can just get on the eShop, search for Mario 64 and just download that. And, you know, there's an argument to be made for, like, why why do you want these games on the Switch? Just play them old school. Just play them on the classic. Just do whatever. You don't need them on the Switch. Why does Nintendo have to do that? And while that's true, I think that the answer of why they still should consider it is twofold. One is, to be fair, Nintendo has set the precedent with, with three previous virtual consoles on the Wii, the 3DS, and the Wii U. And they were great and very successful. And they did kind of tease us at the beginning of the Switch's life that they were still planning on doing something like that. And the other reason is, hey, it's great to have an NES and an SNES Classic, absolutely, but also the Switch is the X Factor because of the portability. That's just what it comes down to. Nintendo's provided us this amazing ability to do this with the Switch, and so if they want to do classic games, I don't want to say that they're obligated to put them on the Switch so we can take advantage of the Switch's portability, but I certainly would think that they're not utilizing the Switch's portability properly. They already have a precedent and an infrastructure for a virtual console. They provided us this awesome portable nature with the Switch. They should really put those two ideas together, man. A lot of us would love to see that. If I could start pl if I could play games like Earthworm Jim on the SNES or the original Majora's Mask on the N Nintendo 64, on my Switch portably in my hands. Oh my god, you guys. That gets me so excited, man. A Link to the Past, Super Metroid. There's, I mean, the list goes on and on. And it is going to be great to get the NES titles, don't get me wrong. That's going to be like breaking ground for these classic games on the Nintendo Switch. Very excited for that. But I'm hoping it goes beyond that. And if it's going to happen, it's going to be after the online service launches, after everyone's paying Nintendo 20 bucks a year to access this, that's when Nintendo would roll out something as far as classic games. But I think we also have to acknowledge that we might live in a real world where Nintendo actually doesn't want to do this. And they're going to stop at the 20 NES classic games on the Nintendo Switch online service, 
and leave it at that. And if you want to play those other games, you have to buy SNESs or 64s or GameCubes or just buy the classic retro consoles. They're going to continue to release maybe till the end of time. So that's it for me today. A couple of awesome Twitter questions. Thank you so much, everybody, for asking questions. If I didn't answer your question, I'm sorry, I didn't want to make this one any longer than it already is, just a handful of questions to discuss. Of course, if you do want to be a part of these conversations and Q&As in the future, you definitely should follow me on Twitter, where I usually do these. I do have a Facebook page I use for this stuff occasionally as well, but Twitter is where I'm most active. Every day I'm tweeting and talking with you guys and talking about all sorts of things. This is where I do my Q&A questions, so I recommend following me there because that's where you can interact with me a little bit more personally. And with that being said, this was a lot of fun. I love talking Metroid, and that's it. So thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule to Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.